guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103. Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Cadez versus Barcelona in La Liga. We're now slowly but surely reaching the end of the La Liga campaign where Barcelona are barely, and I mean barely, in a league title race. And of course, the next game in La Liga is El Clasico. So getting a result in this game will give us some sort of a hope going into that game, maybe salvaging somewhat of a title race going into the last five games. And of course, this will be the match before the second leg of PSG next week. So this match has a lot of meaning. Of course, it won't be an easy game as well. Traveling away will make it difficult. But again, we're on a good moment right now, but it won't be as easy as it may seem. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make you should subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9 p.m local time so your regular kickoff time in la liga and this match will be taking place at the estadio nuevo mirandia which of course is the home stadium of quedez and the referee for this match has also been confirmed as well on the pitch it will be jose luis santana and on the vr it will be francisco hernandez Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona are currently sat in second place in La Liga on 67 points. After playing 30 matches, we have 20 wins, 7 draws, 3 losses. You look at our last 5 games in the league, we have 4 wins and 1 draw. Great recent form, but Real Madrid had the exact same recent form as well and they're in first place on 75 points, 8 points clear of Barcelona. After playing 30 matches, they have 23 wins, 6 draws and one loss. We're two points ahead of Girona in third place as well, and we're almost nine points clear of fourth place Atletico de Madrid. Now, of course, with the Clasico coming up, we're eight points behind. If Real Madrid do not drop points this weekend, the league is going to be over. Even where we have so many stipulations to try to win this league, we're eight points behind. You have to win the Clasico, which again is not going to be easy whatsoever. If you look at the top teams and who they'll be playing this weekend, we all play tomorrow. So Atletico Madrid, We'll be playing Girona. That's going to be a very, very interesting game. And Mallorca will be hosting Real Madrid. Now, here's the part that benefits Barcelona a lot as well. Both of these games will be taking place before we play Cadez. I thought Madrid play Girona early in the morning. Mallorca and Real Madrid in the afternoon. Then we're in the evening. So, Barcelona, big implications, of course. We, know the, we will know the results of these two games going into our games. That can maybe have some tinkering with the lineup selection as well. For third versus fourth at Atletico Madrid and Girona, a draw would be very, very nice. Again, just give us uh, some uh, distance between Girona or maybe Atletico Madrid win as well. I wouldn't be uh, not too worried about them trying to get second place. Mallorca, of course, is coming off the back of losing the Copa del Rey final. They now have Real Madrid at home. Again, Real Madrid have to drop points in this game. If they do not drop points in this game, I think the league title is officially over, in my opinion. Even if we win the Clasico, we have the, if we win the Clasico, let's say Real Madrid win this game, we win that we beat them in the Clasico. We'll reduce the points to five points, and then have to drop five points in the last, or is it six games? Which I think is very, very unlikely. But of course, I think this is the this is right now the good time to catch out Real Madrid. They're not they of course drop uh, they drew three three with uh, Man City midweek in the Champions League. They have Man City, of course, uh, next Wednesday, where they've never won at the Etihad Stadium, so there might be some rotation on their side. They maybe could get, you know, some sort of a uh, poor result. Mallorca away isn't, you know, too easy as well. So we need Real Madrid to drop points in this game. Even a draw, we'll take it. We get a draw, we win. We reduce the points to about six points. We beat them in Clasico. You're talking about, that's, that's when you're definitely in a title race. But when you're in, you know, when you're eight points ahead, Going into the classico, even if you win, you reduce it to five. It's still gonna be, you know. I think Real Madrid can drop maybe one game from now until the end of the season after the classico. Two is where I think you know uh, we might. I think we will progress to the semifinals of the Champions League. I don't think Real Madrid will as well. So that's gonna have again even further implications but we're still in it for now we still have to believe and again we'll wait and see how things turn out again it's not in our hands we have to wait and see if Real Madrid drop points again I would say there's about one percent chance of Barcelona being in a title race and the most important thing right now is us securing second place to have a place in the Super Cup in 2025. Now if you take a look at our opponents in Cadez and where they're currently standing in the league table they're currently sat in the relegation zone in 18th place in La Liga on 25 points after playing 30 matches they have four wins 13 draws and 13 losses. You look at their last five games in the league, two wins, two draws, and one loss. They're currently three points adrift of the relegation zone, and they're on the verge of being relegated to the second division this season. 
Let's now take a look at our opponents in Cadiz. Of course, Cadiz this season have been very, very poor. I think for their standard, they should be maybe hovering just above the relegation zone and staying in the lead. But the fact they're in it, three points in it as well. They're not doing too well. They've been chopping and changing managers this season as well. The last time we faced them in La Liga was actually the first home game of the season, the second game of the season overall. Uh, it was at the Monge week. We beat them 2 0. But I tell you what, it was a very, very close game. Again, it's the beginning of the season, you know, trying to get up to match rhythm and match fitness. You can't really, you know, analyze the game too, too much. But it was a Pedri goal in the 80th minute to bring us 1 0. Then Fran Torres got a goal on, like, on a counter attack. I think it was a long ball from Ter Stegen, flicked on by Lewandowski. Fran Torres threw on goal. He scores. So 2 0 on paper. So on paper, it looks comfortable. But I think the game overall was it. Yeah, Frankie Dion playing center back. He had preseason. Oya Romeo at the time, Gabby playing on the left wing. So it was a very injured Barcelona side along with of course nil nil the first game against Santafe, Xavi red card, uh, Rafinha red card, you know the mood wasn't the best and we barely beat Cadez in the end so again it was beginning season so I don't think you can read into it too too much I mean we're talking this game happened in August you know we're coming up to almost you know eight months nine months since, <laughs> since this game so can't really read into it too much but we do of course have the upper hand and head to head this season against Cadiz. Now, take a look at the last six matches in all competition. In their last match, they beat relegation candidate uh, Hernando 1-0. They lost to Real Sociedad 2-0. They beat Atletico Madrid 2-0. They drew 1-1 with uh, Rayo Vallecano. They drew 2-2 with Celta Vigo. And they lost 2-0 to Osasuna. Let's take a quick look at the last three games. In all competition, firstly is the 2-0 win against Atletico Madrid. I did, uh, I did talk about this game in the Atletico Madrid preview when we beat them at 3-0, I think just before the uh, international break. I touched upon this game a little bit from the Atletico Madrid point of view, but from the Cadiz point of view, unbelievable result for them. I think before this game, they have not won in I think about five or six months in general, and the fact they beat Atletico Madrid was crazy. They played in the 4-4-2 formation. Juan Mietnuk, who was on loan from uh, Real Betis, had a great game getting a brace. They overall had a strong game, but I think it was more so because Atletico Madrid were way, way, way off the pace, but an excellent, excellent, excellent result for them. Not only getting their first win in a few months, but also doing it against one of the better and top sides in La Liga as well. But I like did follow up with a 2 0 loss to Real Sociedad. It is at the end of what does, so you know, we can understand uh, that, so to speak. Keep in mind, watch out for their captain and goalkeeper, Ledesma. He's the one that's been most consistent for them this season. If Cadiz do get relegated, I see Ledesma making a, a big move. In La Liga to under maybe the top 10, top 12 size. Great, great, fantastic goalkeeper. He's basically keeping Cadiz alive, making these score lines not look as big as they should be. But again, in terms of personnel and system and style of play, it's still very, very similar. They don't really chop and change too, too much. Again, they only have one game a week in La Liga. And of course, also dead on paper, we're better at the Anahuata. It's going to be difficult and they end up losing 2 0. But the last match in all competition was a 1 0 win against Granada. So getting two wins in the last three games for Cadiz is very, very good for them after not winning for a few months against, you know, bottom of the table or 19th place, I believe, uh, Granada, who are also fighting for relegation. So it's a big win for them getting points off their direct rivals to try and stay in the league. Uh, Robert Navarro got the goal in the end as well. I would say it's a very, very even contest. I think with the home atmosphere, Cadiz were on top for the majority of the game. Granada did have a few chances in this game as well. This could easily have been a 1-1 game. You could even maybe say 1-1 would have been a fair result, but in the end, Cadiz nicked it. One no victory for them. Clean sheet as well. So when they when they do win, they tend not to concede, which again is a good uh, you know feat for them. But a massive win in three points in their pursuit to staying in La Liga. So overall, final thoughts on Cadiz. I would say, of course, I'm not going to beat around the bush. They're not a great side uh, on paper. They have been playing well. They are managed by their manager Mauricio Pellegrino, who does have a fairly good record. In La Liga, he's joined Cadez in January after Sergio Gomez, uh, Gonzalez, sorry, who was Cadez manager for a very, very long time, was sacked. He had a good record against Barcelona. Mercy Pellegrino does not I remember him in his time with um, Leganes, I believe it was. He was kind of the next hipster manager. He was kind of the Michel the, uh, of then, of course. Michel now is doing fantastically well being in the top four of La Liga, but being around the hype and momentum. I think he went to Southampton, flopped there, haven't really seen him since. I think he came and managed... Um, Deportivo Alaves, if I'm not mistaken, but he's back in the, you know, working in La Liga. He's, I think, a good manager, but, you know, he's dealing with the, not one of the best squads in the world, and it's going to be difficult for him. And in terms of players to look out for for uh, Cadiz, I would say, again, Ledesma is one of their best uh, players this season. Their captain, he's been, you know, very, very consistent in his performances. Uh, Juan Mi tends to turn up against Barcelona alone from, uh, 
And yeah, Betis, you have Maxi Gomez up top, who was linked with Barcelona for a very, very long time from his time at uh, Valencia, kind of the Suarez replacement, so to speak. They have Folly in defense as well, who tends to do well against Barcelona. Apart from that, it's pretty standard to them. It's a... Uh, you have, you know, some uh, youngsters, some experience as well, players that we've seen play against Barcelona before. And again, that home record of Cadets will be definitely over their head. We won last season, probably only due to that medical emergency, if we're being honest. We were, of course, dominating. We were in the game. I think we were only winning 1 or 2 nil at that point. So again, away makes things difficult. And again, they've been, uh, they have not played in about 12 to 15 days, Cadets as well. I think their last game against... Um, Granada took place not last weekend but the weekend before that so they're coming to this game fresh as can be but that could be you know a disadvantage to them as well we have that match rhythm that match sharpness and they don't I think also Cadiz did play a friendly game by the way they played a friendly game that was 1-1 I don't know who played in terms of like their starters but they did have a little bit of a friendly game uh from those 15 days where they didn't play so maybe that could help them a little bit but again this PA should be a team that Barcelona uh, should be dominating the only way for Cadiz to win again is by any other team is to park the bus hit us on the break and pray they score. Now with the league season winding down slowly but surely, we only have eight games left in La Liga this season. Yellow card accumulation is something that will have a massive, massive effect. Now of course in our last league game, three players suffered yellow cards and it will be suspended for this game. Inigo Martinez, Robert Lewandowski, Joel Cancelo are ineligible to play this game after their yellow cards in the last league game. They will be serving a one match suspension and will not be available for this game but they will be there of course for the classico next weekend similarly though there are three players who are one yellow card away from suspension andreas christensen ilkai gundawan and oriel romeo if any of these three players pick up a yellow card in this match they will be suspended for the Classico. So of course you're looking at Gundogan, you're looking at Christensen, these two players we need for the Classico, so we gotta prevent them from getting yellow cards by any means necessary with Romeu. It's whatever, if we're being completely honest. So again, Lewandowski, Cancelo, Inigo suspended, will not be playing in this game, will not be in the squad list, they'll have the weekend off, and Andres, Christensen, Gundogan, Romeu are one more yellow card away from suspension in La Liga. We do have some very quick updates on some of the injuries and fitness around the first team squad. Firstly, on Lamen Yamal, Gerard Romero is reporting that Lamen Yamal played the game against PSG, having suffered from a stomach bug for a couple of days prior to the game, but now he is fine. So apparently, Lamen Yamal was a bit sick going into the game against PSG, but he played, of course, didn't play, I think, particularly well overall, but didn't have a dreadful, dreadful game. It could be because he had some stomach issues. Again, with the, you know, Fran Torres coming back from injury, Joel Felix being a bit questionable. In in some of these key games, it wasn't really the best uh, move for Barcelona to rotate. In the end, Lemany Mal sucked it up and played, and credit to him as well. We also have an injury update on Andreas Christensen. It's coming in from Tony Juan Marti. He's come out saying that on the medical level, it would be ideal for Andreas Christensen to rest for a while to be able to recover fully. He is not 100% and he plays it when he plays many minutes in a short amount of time. He is committed to the team and has decided to help by being available until the end of the season. The medical services and physiotherapists are treating him with all the possible care so that he can perform at the maximum possible level. This, of course, you know, this is basically saying that, look, Andreas Christensen is playing with an injury. Which, you know what, again, like Lamanya Bell, credit to him, I respect it. But how much rest do you need? Did not play against Atletico Madrid, came back after the international break, didn't play, didn't start against PSG. I mean, how much rest do you need to the point where the club had to declare that you're injured? And again, Barcelona have never confirmed officially that Christensen was injured. Of course, I came out in the press conference saying that he had a knock against Atletico Madrid. The next game after that, he said that he's uh, not quite ready, but the media came out saying that actually he's a 100% fit, they just want to rest him. This is an injury that needs a uh, rest to kind of heal, which again is understandable, but... You know, you've had the whole international break. He pulled out, of course, at international duty with Denmark as well. He's played, like, what, 20 minutes in the past month? I don't know. But again, he is uh, has that, you know, knock, so to speak. So whether he starts this quick weekend or not remains to be seen as well. He is suspended, of course, next week against PSG. So it's going to have some implications on this lineup. But overall, Christensen, bit of a knock. Not 100% fit, but still being available to help out the team. Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning, of course, I lost a lot of questions in the media about the PSG game, its future, the upcoming league games, title race, players rested, player injuries, player decisions, the lot. So let's get in and see what the manager had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying that Cadez is an uncomfortable opponent. Tomorrow we will play a very 
difficult match. How can I motivate the players for tomorrow's game after the PSG game? Tomorrow's game is crucial. If we lose, we can bid farewell to La Liga. Rotation, it will be depending on fatigue, injuries, and how the players feel. And we will decide the XI tomorrow. We will make a team to win. So he's not going to ro rotate heavily. So to speak, Cadets have lost one game in the last five and they also beat Atletico Madrid at home recently as well. I feel like the team gained confidence after my announcement that players are going to take a step forward in this difficult time of the season. Next week there is El Clasico and if we win tomorrow and El Clasico we will be five points away and we still have some options to win the league. If we lose to Real Madrid we almost have to give it to them essentially but tomorrow's game will be a difficult match. So Chavi thinks five points behind Real Madrid after El Clasico we're still in it so if Real Madrid drop points against Mallorca and then we win and we win the Clasico we're well in there but again any drop points from now to the Clasico including the Clasico league title is over. Since my announcement, the club is in very calm, also you, the journalist, as well. I understand the excitement of supporters, but we still have a long way to go. We got a great result against PSG, but there's still another game to be played. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm over the PSG game. Yes, we played well, we got the result, gets in there, but now, you know, the job's not done yet. We focus on Cadez, then we go again. On Frankie and Pedri, each case is different. It depends, but tomorrow we will have the same level of intensity as the, during the Champions League game. On Victor Roque, tomorrow he will surely have some minutes. The team's in a very good positive dynamic right now. I understand the euphoria that's going around right now, but nothing is done. We are in the same situation as before PSG. We should stay focused for the second leg. Is it impossible for me to change my decision? I've said it already plenty of times. Nothing has changed. You still have time to ask me a different question. Didn't say no though, did he? I'm just saying. Tomorrow's commitment must be the same as the Champions League or even more. Could uh, tomorrow be the game for Mikel Fey to play? Yes, it could be. He is ready. La Basia has trained him very well. Tomorrow's uh, vi victory will also give us an extra wing for the return match against PSG. We still have to participate in the fight for La Liga. The match against Gethez is very crucial. Rafinha is an intense player who generates danger. He attacks spaces very well. He's one of the best players in the world in his position. He's then asked about the racist comments about Levan Yamal from Movie Star, I believe it was. I think since then the reporter or whoever the announcer has uh, resigned from his position and he came out saying that it is disgusting and I condemn it. Levan Yamal is calm and happy, so there is no need to talk about it any further than this. Chavi then says he's asked about Gundawan. He's you know he's playing a lot of minutes, one yellow card away from suspension as well. Chavi said we want to give Gundawan a rest. He makes a tremendous effort and he's no longer a teenager. I think Chavi's capping. I really think that Chavi's going to start good. We'll talk about that, of course, in the uh, lineup predictions. On Adoho's future, he said that I can see him. I can't see him in a different place. In my opinion, he should 100% stay at Barcelona. Again, not really definitive there, but hopefully uh, there is some sort of hint towards that. Physically, we're at a very high level. Against PSG, we ran more than them. That is true. Then asked on Kunde, said that I could say that Kunde is one of the transfers that I asked the club to sign. He's one of the best defenders in the world right now. He's not one of the best, Chavi. He is the best. Name me a better defender right now in the world than Kunde. There isn't one out there. Um, I don't win games. The players are the ones who win the games. He asked after, you know, his two substitutions came on, had instant impact, Petty with the assist and Christian with the goal. Chavi said, look, I don't win the games. It's the players who go out there and perform. We've improved an aspect of team play and from there, individual stands out. Um, we've improved in aspects of team play and from there, individuality stands out more. Indigo has improved. Lewandowski in the attack has also improved and now he recovers uh, more balls. Finally, he's asked about Roque again so that we prepared a video showing his movements in space for tomorrow he offers a lot and he will definitely get minutes to play but take advantage of that and we try to make him understand his positional play as well and that concluded Chavi's press comments reaction had the match against Kedez tomorrow Let's now get into the lineup predictions. We're we'll start with the manager, of course, Chavi Hernandez. I'm gonna try my best to predict this lineup. It's a very, very difficult and interesting lineup selection. You have players suspended, you have PSG on Tuesday, it's an away game. Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid's game will be taking place beforehand as well. The big question is, how much rotation will Chavi do? We just came off the back, of course, of 10 days break as well. We're going to be, of course, have PSG Tuesday, uh, Classico on Sundays. You don't want to take any risk in regards to players getting injured. It depends on Chavi's opinion. Is Chavi think, okay, we just had 10 days break. Let's get the match rhythm and sharpness up. Or is he thinking we just had a high intensity game against PSG? Let's not risk too many players. I think Chavi will go with this lineup 
on the screen right now. I think he'll go with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Kunde, Aru, Haoku, Barsi, and Hector Fort. Midfield three of Christensen, De Jong, and Gundogan, and a front three of Lamagne Yamal, Ferran Torres, and Rafinha. I think Xavi will go fairly strong. I think Xavi will pick the strongest team that he can select for this game. By the way, keep in mind, Xavi is suspended for this game, so Oscar Hernandez will be on the touchline. Again, Oscar Hernandez is undefeated as the Barcelona touchline manager. In the back five, I think that's pretty much set in stone. Of course, Hector Ford coming in for the suspended Juul Cancelo could bring in Marcus Alonso, but I think, again, we have not seen Marcus Alonso since his medical green light a few weeks ago. Putting him at left back as well is questionable. At left center back, maybe at a center back uh, reinforcement, wouldn't mind, but at left back, Save me the misery. Midfield three. I would suspect Roberto to start this game since Roberto is suspended for uh, PSG on Tuesday. I think uh, also Christensen is suspended as well. I think it'll be one of them who starts because I think again with Christensen you don't know if he's fully fit or not. So Chavi might put Roberto in the pivot who did play Roberto in the pivot against uh, PSG. Gundogan playing him with the yellow card accumulation is a massive, massive risk. But I think Chavi will go for it. Maybe some of them off later on. Diang of course, he's going to get some more minutes, get some more match sharpness and rhythm. I don't think Pedri will start this game. I think he's going to save Pedri for PSG to start that game on Tuesday. In the front three, again, you don't really have too much wiggle room. I could see Joel Felix coming in, if I'm not, if I'm being completely honest, but I think, again, he wants to keep that sharp miss. He wants to keep the rhythm going with the forwards, especially with Rafinha. When you're on this hot form, you have to keep going, taking him out, and then bringing him back in doesn't really help out. Of course, Lewandowski is suspended, and here's my big prediction. I don't think Xavi will start Victor Roque. I pray he does. I hope he does. He should, but I don't think Xavi will start Victor Roque. I think he'll go with Fernando Torres, and then number nine, either Joel Felix or Rafinha on the left, or uh, Joel Felix or Rafinha on the right. I think, you know, from La Mania Mal, Rafinha, Joel Felix, out of those three forwards, two of them will start. Which two? You don't know. I think it'll go to La Mania Mal and Rafinha in the end. Again, my general consensus is that Xavi will go strong for this game. I suspect, hopefully, Real Madrid to drop some points. And then we will know that, of course, going into this game. So Xavi will go fairly strong to get that three points, narrow the gap, hopefully, going in to the Classic Co. But that's not anything that Xavi Hernandez will select for this match. But, of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Xavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach, and you betcha, I've made a lot of changes from Xavi's lineup selection. I have gone absolutely full rotation galore. I've gone with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Sisha Roberto, Christensen, Marcus Alonso, Hector Fort, midfield three of Romeo De Jong, and Fermin Lopez, and a front three of Ferran Torres, Victor Roque, and Joao Felix. I'm not taking no risk. You have a big chance to qualify for the semifinals against PSG. You have Classico next week as well. I am taking no risk whatsoever. And this team is without a shadow of a doubt perfectly good enough to beat 18th place Kedez. Um, I've gone with Kunde, uh, not Kunde. I've gone with Roberto at right back to rest Kunde, and also gone with Christian at center back to play Romayu in the midfield. Again, I didn't want to start Dionga, not start Dionga. I didn't want to start Pedri yet as well. I would save him for PSG. I brought Marcus Alonso at left center back. I want, of course, rest Aruho and Kubarsi. We have really no one else. Indigo is suspended, which does suck. So I brought in Marcus Alonso at left center back. Wouldn't mind that whatsoever. Hector Fort being at left back. Romayu in the pivot. Let him get some minutes. Maybe he can get that yellow card suspension uh, out of the way as well. I want Dionga to get again increasing minutes. This is going to be a big game for Fermin Lopez in the uh, number 8 as well in the interior to give him some freedom. You want Felix on the on the left. I'll love to see Fernand Torres on the right as well where I think he's the most comfortable. And of course down the line, Victor Roque. This for me is the game for him. He's going to be the number 9. No Lewandowski whatsoever. It's up to him to get the goal and lead the Barcelona front line. So that's the line that I like personally for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you rather pick my lineup or Chavez lineup. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I think Barcelona will walk away winners 2-0. I think firstly, Barcelona need to get that first initial goal. I think, you know, the first 20 minutes will be a bit cagey. Cadiz will think, okay, we can, you know, uh, I think they think, but I think Barcelona is vulnerable. Again, depends a lot on the line of selection. If Xavi goes fairly strong, fairly weak like I do. But again, I think Barcelona will have to just, you know, break that intensity first 10, 15 minutes, get the early goal first, control the game, then the second goal will definitely come. There is no way Barcelona can draw points in this game. Unless Real Madrid win and we draw points, I wouldn't care if I'm being completely honest. But if Real Madrid draw points and we do not win this game, I will be absolutely fuming. But again, it should be a game that Barcelona should win comfortably. Again, get some momentum and confidence ahead of the PSG game and El Clasico next week as well. Again, I don't see Barcelona losing this game. We could definitely draw. We can definitely draw points 1-1 or 0-0, again, depending on lineup selections and the momentum and confidence uh, as the game uh, starts. Don't think we'll lose, though. I think there's a 0% chance Barcelona lose, but maybe 10% that we draw this game, I think 90% 
that we do end up winning. I think a clean sheet again, keep that clean sheet record going. And La Liga to second has having this big Zamora uh, trophy remontada as well. So we can get that going. And if in La Liga this season as well, away from home. So it has everything for Barcelona to go out there and win. I think that will be the result in the end. And I have one Barcelona win this game by two goals to nil. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what your scoreline prediction will be. So that was a match preview for Cadez versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to first see, of course, is your score prediction. And secondly, on those lineups. Firstly, would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? What do you think Chavi will go with? What would you go with you, the manager? Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come and join me and watch the game with me. Follow after the match by my match reviews. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Big game ahead. Let's go out there and get three points ahead of the big week next week. Take care and force the Barca. Barca! Barca!